You're tuned in to Nerd Overload, your weekly show for video games, movies, TV shows, comics, tech news, and more. Now your hosts, Cody Pinnock, Samantha Cross, Sam Dunham, and Josh Harrison. Hey everybody, welcome to a brand new episode of the Nerd Overload radio type show, the official show of popular characters website, nerdoverload.com. I'm Cody. I'm Samantha. And I'm Sam. We have a great show for you this week. Thank and, you all. And the heart of a champion. We have the heart of a champion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a great show for you this week. Thank you all for tuning in. We have a bunch of news to go over, but first let's get into some things we've been checking out. What have we been checking out? We went to Rift Tracks, Doctor Who, The Five Doctors. Oh, yeah? How was it? Last night. Um, it was really funny, really good. It was really good. Yeah. I didn't realize that I had seen the last half of The Five Doctors, but apparently we went to a late night Grandview showing of that one time. Mm, uh, probably. But, that makes, yeah, yeah. makes sense. I mean, it was the one with the silver spandex guy jump that jumps around and shoots <laughs> spears at people. Nice. Okay. <laughs> but it was hilarious. They did a great job. The Rift Tracks guys are always great. We've we've talked about him on here several we have. times. Oh yeah. Uh but with the added Doctor Who punch, like it made it super extra good. Mm-hmm. Also I don't understand why it's called the five doctors when there's only four are really in it. Baker's in it for about a minute. Like literally a scene. Yeah. Really? Where, where he's like one of those guys that like basically row boats in uh in the the Italian guys, they got the big long poles that push boats around. And uh, oh, oh yeah, um, gondola. Yeah, guys. Gond- he that's what he gondola be- boys. Yeah, that's what they're called. <laughs> yeah, he he, boys. he he bees a, a gondola boat boy <laughs> for about two minutes in the movie. Okay, well you know better than nothing, I guess. Before he gets kidnapped by the floating space napkin. <laughs> that sounds like a great episode. <laughs> It's full of, like, the cheesiest special effects. It's pretty great. Oh, okay, cool. Very cool. And, you know, four, at least four doctors interacting. Like, Tom Baker doesn't interact with any of the other doctors. Oh, he doesn't. Oh. Which is the whole conceit of the whole, like, movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it, it, it's fun to see them all playing off each other. I still think Troughton's my favorite of the old ones. Let's see, Troughton, which one's that? Is that the bull second cut, one? Bull cut, yeah. Bull cut, the, one. with the flute? Yeah. yeah. Bull cut recorder boy. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Although he doesn't play his recorder yeah. in this. He just wears a really, really big, poofy fur coat. That's literally <laughs> tied on to him. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of good jokes about how they're just four old men running around. <laughs> a lot of good jokes about how... Hartnell is not the original one. Oh, yeah? Because the original one died. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was a great show. It was fun. Good. Uh, we'll just bounce back and forth, I guess. I watched the first two episodes of DuckTales. Oh, Ooh. yeah. We did, too. Yeah. It was really, really good. It was very good. Yeah. I was surprised. Well, not super surprised because I knew it was going to be pretty good. But it was, yeah, it actually set up some interesting kind of conceits that the original show didn't. Like, you know, the... Huey, Dewey, and Louie being the nephews of Donald Duck and, you know, great nephews of, of Scrooge McDuck, where's Donald's sister? And they set that up as kind of an overarching mystery yeah, a little bit. Yeah, which is bit. very cool. That's very cool. That's a thing, a thing they never touched on. I I like the um, – it's not off the wall crazy, but it's definitely a little more it's, action-packed. Yeah. Uh, well, and quicker it's, pace than the original cartoon, I guess. And it's funny. It's funny. It's really <laughs> funny. I understand why they cast some of the actors like this show has a lot of really fairly big name actors in it. Um, David Tennant as Scrooge McDuck. Oh, Mrs. Beasley or Beakley was um, talks something or other. She's a she's a pretty famous actress. Um, And then the the um, nephews are um, Uh, Danny Pudi, um, Bobby, Bobby Moynihan. And who's the. I can't think of the third one off the top oh, of my head. God. I mean, it would be easy for me to look it up, but I refuse to. <laughs> I don't remember. But the third one is equally as famous. Yeah. Trust me. Uh, the only thing is, I, especially in the case of the nephews, I think maybe the celebrity casting is a little wasted because they don't sound like the actors. It, it could just be any random yeah, voice actor it, it really for them. Could. Yeah. They sound better than they do in the original. Oh, I watched, oh, yeah. I watched the original pilot last night. Oh, it's t- it's rough to get through. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. 
But uh, but no, it's it's fun. It's enjoyable. I like it a lot. I I like Glomgold, the yeah. the evil <laughs> uh, Scrooge McDuck, and uh, I really dig how they've made references already to Darkwing Duck and Goof Troop. Yeah, and and it makes sense. Was that a couple times? Was that uh, Roxanne from Goofy movie? It almost looked like yeah, yeah, like adult Roxanne from Goofy yeah. movie. Yeah, I uh, I like Launchpad in this. He's just goofy enough. Yeah, and just dumb enough. Although I think if they were going the uh, celebrity stunt casting route, they should have gotten Patrick Warburton. Yeah, but uh, I'll be excited to see uh, Lin Manuel Miranda as. Uh, Gizmo Duck. Gizmo Duck. Yeah. yeah, that's gonna be really good. Yeah, looking forward to that. <laughs> Unfortunately, the next episode isn't till like the end of September. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh man. Give it a nice break before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really ruminate on those mysteries. Yeah. Why would they do that? I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. But... Those mysteries and rewrite that history. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it. The show almost gave me um, slight Gravity of the Falls. Oh yeah, that a little was, bit. There was definitely a big inspiration for it. I think. Yeah, and I think um, a tiny part of that might be uh, Emmy Cesariga, is who was a um, storyboard artist on Gravity Falls, is doing the same thing for this. Yeah, and so a lot of those sensibilities came in. Plus, it it just you could tell that everyone who was involved in the project had a love for the original show and wanted to do this new one right. Yeah. So. Yeah, you can definitely feel that throughout. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Okay, your turn. <laughs> it's it's better than the original Duck oh, It is. Was. <laughs> it is. Absolutely. I agree. Oh, Yakuza Kiwami. You yeah. I am allowed to give impressions on it. Okay, what is the impression that you get? <laughs> I've never had to knock on wood. <laughs> oh, no. I'm glad. I'm glad you picked up on that. Very good. <laughs> Oh, mighty, mighty boss um, tones. I've only played maybe an hour or so, maybe a couple, and it's mostly cutscenes so far. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's definitely mo- uh, more Yakuza. Okay, cool. Um, it's a remake of the first game, mm. which was a PlayStation 2 game. So it's it's old enough to warrant you know going back to it. Um, it uses a lot of the same mechanics as the previous Yakuza 0, which was fantastic. Okay. So it's just like more of that, which is okay by me. <laughs> yeah, that sounds cool. Um, I'll definitely have a review of it when around the time it comes out. Okay, right on. <laughs> when I'm allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's it's really good. I mean, the map is the same. It's the same Camarocho as the other game. Okay. I don't know. I haven't really had time to see what kind of like stuff there is to do in Camarocho because there's always a bajillion weird, uh, fun mini games hidden throughout the city. But it hasn't really opened up to me yet. Uh, okay. But the combat is still the same beat 'em up style, mm. cool stuff. Okay. Cool. That sounds really interesting. Yeah. I haven't played any of the Yakuza games, but that sounds fun. Oh, they're great. I've, from what I've seen, it's like. The uh, side quests are almost more fun than the actual, like, yeah, storyline. Yeah, and they're all wacky and weird. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's very much like the modern equivalent to uh, Streets of Rage or uh, Final Fight, like a beat okay. up Like a beat up Okay, very cool. Mixed with a Japanese Yakuza Mafia soap opera storyline <laughs> that's pretty over the top. Okay, very cool. It's worth getting. Yeah. When it comes out. And it's only 30 bucks. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Or 39 I don't remember. Somewhere around there. Yeah. <laughs> that ballpark. Yeah. <laughs> not full price. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Speaking of games, I played about three or four hours of uh, Miitopia, the new uh, 3DS game where you put your little me person in, and it's a, it's an RPG. It's a full-blown RPG. I've been wondering if I should pick it up or not. It's very good. And it looks like it's going to have about 20 to 25 hours worth of game time in, which is pretty standard. Yeah. It's very funny. It's even funnier when you put custom um, means. The whole the whole idea is you um, you can make custom faces for every character in the game and not just your party. Like every character in the game, every town gets populated, every NPC gets populated by random faces. Or it actually ties into an online uh, lobby where it like generates like the most used 
<laughs> and so you can like I have a uh, Guy Fieri as as uh, a roving uh, gourmet who gives me random treats every once in a while. <laughs> and yeah, the iced tea, the king of the king of town. Yeah, no, it's it's fun to put either your friends or celebrities into these weird situations. And they they say stuff like uh, to- a lot of the dialogue seems like Tomodachi Life, which is not a game. Yeah, it's a to- it's like a neat. Toy. It's a neat toy, but it's not a game. This is an actual game, and it has a really interesting... Um, I've never played the Persona games, but I've been hearing a lot about them lately. And there's like an S-Link kind of thing where you like build up your friendship with... Is that something that's part yeah, of that like, game? Yeah, like social link. This, like... Game, this game has that. Huh. Yeah, the higher your social link with your party members is, they get like uh, special interrupts. Like, um, if someone takes, if you're up high enough and you take a hit, like, uh, one of your party members will come over and say, Hey, are you okay? And part of your health comes back (laughs) and it's, it's really cute. It's really funny. It's not worth the $40. (laughs) It's not worth full price. Wait till it's on sale. I think if it's 30 would have been good. 20 would be great. This is a good solid $20 game that they're, unless there's something super amazing at the end, that really bumps it up. And like I said, I'm only about four or five hours into it, so it's like a three or four, I guess. But it's enjoyable. The uh, The Nerd Overload crew is my four-person party. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Cody, the uh, the thief, the rogue. Nice. Uh, Samantha, the mage. Josh, the warrior. And I am a chef. <laughs> because I needed a uh, healer. And uh, the chef is actually like a defensive like tank healer. Nice. So... Yeah. <laughs> and you get um costume unlocks like your um it's it's an interesting kind of idea where you it, you don't have a, a standard uh shop but when you're in like an at the end of each like level you go to an inn to like heal up and stuff and they um there's a section of the inn it's really hard to explain where you check to see what each party member wants and they'll randomly say, "Hey, I want this upgraded shirt or I want this upgraded weapon." And you pay for it and there's a slight chance that they come can come back with nothing (laughs) but most of the time they come back with the weapon or armor and the armor is like uh costumes in tomodachi life but once you get it you can uh you don't lose the um upgraded stats and you can mix and match whatever you're wearing at any point oh cool so yeah you don't lose the customization right yeah yeah and uh like most games, it has amiibo support, which I'm very happy about. Um, yeah, so I haven't I haven't done anything with it, but it's just costume unlocks, I think, from what I understand. I will say, I wish this game came out a little earlier in the 3DS's lifespan, because let's be real, the 3DS is kind of on its last leg. Yeah, and this is a game that really could have done if it would have come out about. Three quarters of the way through instead of, you know, five eighths or seven eighths of the way through its lifespan. And by this point have been down to 20 bucks. It would be cleaning up the <laughs> Nintendo eShop market. It really would. But where it stands now, I don't know. It's it's just going to be okay, kind of forgotten. Yeah, it's going to be one of those games that remembered as the last few. One of the one of the last really, really good ones. It's solid. It's it's And again, the writing is really well done. The treehouse knocks it out of the park again. They do, yeah. They're um, always good at localizing the games. Yeah. In a comedic tone. Yeah, yeah. The other thing I don't understand is if they put it out so late on the 3DS, why not put it on the Switch? Yeah. I kind of just want it on the Switch. I want all my games on the Switch, so I only have one console. That was the whole point of the Switch, so you have <laughs> one console to carry around everywhere. But they've been keeping the... The 3DS on life support for whatever reason. I don't know. They just don't want to give up that revenue stream. I I guess. You know what? Either poop or get off the pot, Nintendo. (laughs) I mean, listen, if if you wanted to make a home console that you can make portable. Why eat into your own market? Yeah, why keep your your portable? I understand the 3DS is wildly popular and was really kind of their moneymaker during the the Wii U phase. Right? Yeah. But it's it's time to kind of move on. I don't think there's any other games announced for it after the Pokemon remakes no one asked for. Yeah, yeah. So that might be it. And again, why is it not on... 
Well, probably because they want the next generation on the Switch. That's probably what it is. Yeah. But still, I don't know. It just it just seems like they're kind of stepping backwards a little bit with releasing all these games. <laughs> Why on... are they bothering making a remake version or a sequel to X and Y? Like, who? Nobody wanted it. Yeah, no I one did. Want it. I'm not gonna play it. I'm not either. You know, I'm a I'm a huge Pokemon mark, and I'm not gonna play it. I don't really need to have an upgraded super awesome team. I don't I don't care. I, I loved uh whatever it was, Sun and Moon a mm-hmm. lot, but I have no interest. Sun and Moon would have been great if they would have finished the game. <laughs> this this upgraded version seems like it feels like they're just finishing the game that they already had and I don't know, Nintendo game developers shouldn't be rewarded for putting out 3 quarters of a game. Yeah. with an update later on or a full price update essentially later on down the road it kind of rings a little false to me i guess i don't know oh speaking of updates i yeah. i've played a little bit of no man's sky since it got a big huge update oh is it a game now yeah it's almost a completely different game now hey all right it's it's really cool and fun but i i liked it originally too but okay so Re- remind the listener what no man's sky is because it's been a while since we've talked about it it's uh, it's that game everybody got mad about because no. <laughs> it's not real. It wasn't really a game. Yeah, it's a space exploration type game where you go from procedurally generated planet to planet to explore and find mm. aliens and stuff. Yeah, and it takes place in this humongously huge procedurally generated galaxy with other players, and it's so big you probably won't ever see them. And in the original version of the game, you wouldn't ever see them because you couldn't. Yeah, there was no actual <laughs> multiplayer. Yeah, there wasn't any code for that at all. But now there is. Hey, cool. Now you can see other players. They're just like floating like points of light. Ah, okay. And you can talk to them, and that's about it right now. Well, that's better but, than nothing. Yeah, but still, it does it. Yeah. And I don't honestly, I don't know what you would want to do with another person in that game anyway. It works so much better as an isolated Mm -hmm. exploratory experience. Yeah. After jumping back into it, are there um, many more of the plants and animals like have been like named by other people because the user base has been around for as long as it has? I still haven't seen any. Really? Okay. But there's a lot more other aliens around. Like when you go to a space station in the original version, there was like one dude on there you could talk to. Mm. Now there's like four or five aliens around you can talk to and do different things with. Okay. Uh, Apparently there's missions and stuff, but I haven't really gotten far enough to open those up. And you can can get, uh, get in different standings with the different alien races based on doing stuff for them. Mm -hmm. Uh, They added some really nice looking grass. Ooh, all right. Grass physics. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. But, uh, it's good. It took a game that was already, you know, a good game if you didn't consider what they said it was going to be. Yeah. And it, it really seems like they just needed another year to work on it. And Sony made him release it early. Again, that that drives me nuts, putting out three quarters of a game or half of a game and then saying, oh, we'll fix it later. Uh, it's, I don't know. Yeah, it sounds like they didn't have a choice. Sony, yeah, I mean, in this case, they didn't. Yeah. But Sony just said we in put general. all this money into mm-hmm. marketing it. You got to put it out now. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Still, still kind of a weird situation, though. Yeah, yeah. and there's different um, inventory is a little easier to manage because you have different screens for it. You got a technology pocket and a cargo pocket in your mm. inventories. It's good. Oh, cool. Well, uh, speaking of um, going back to things that we've previously talked about and mentioned, I uh, went and saw Spider-Man again. Still good, second time (laughs) through. Knowing the twists and knowing kind of what's coming up doesn't diminish the movie in any way, but it also doesn't add to anything like... They, uh, you can't be like, now I know why he did that. Yeah, well, because it's, it's not really there. Yeah. You... It's kind of it's kind of interesting to go and look at the Vulture's character and go, oh, okay, I know what this twist is, so let me try to watch and see if they do any tells. They don't really, other than the ones that are very broadly telegraphed. And yeah. you know, and the movie's still out so, in theaters, so I don't really want to spoil it because it is it is a legitimate surprise. The the friend I was with was legitimately surprised uh, when when that turned up as well. And it's a great movie. And it's a good, it's a good it. movie. Go see it. Yeah. But I, I think the one-two punch combination of Wonder Woman and then this movie 
kind of made Guardians look really middle of the road. <laughs> it, unfortunately, yeah, it kind of did. And I really liked Guardians when I, it came I out. I loved Guardians, but mm-hmm. yeah, um, yeah. The, Spider-Man and Wonder Woman were both the superior movie for the summer. Although Thor looks like it's going to just blow oh, everything awesome. yeah. out of the water. I'm s- so looking forward to that. When is when is that out anyway? Again, I, don't know. I have the internet right here. I'm not going to look it up. I don't care. <laughs> But, I I am. Well, you're a cheater. <laughs> you're a cheater then. But uh but no, it's Spider Man, it was it was good. I think I can't wait to see Spider Man too. I can't wait to see these characters pop up in other places. One thing I I really kinda really cemented for me on the second watching, I like Spider Man. I like Peter having a foil, someone who knows he's Spider Man. Yeah. I know a lot I know a lot of the original comics were about how he is, you know, alone in this he can't tell anyone that he's Spider-Man and he's alone in his battle and he has to keep things being up and positive when he really can't and stuff like that. But having Ned, the friend character, know who he is and be like... It adds more than it takes away. It does. It absolutely does. And it makes me curious to see what they do with that character when they eventually get to Spider-Man 3 or 4, like they, like you know they're going to, and these characters are adults they can't write them in high school anymore. Yeah. What are they going to do with the Ned character? What are they going to do with the Liz character? Although I bet she's probably not going to come back. Oh, no. We're not going to see her ever again. Yeah. But uh, what are they going to do with Flash Thompson? Because in the comics, Flash Thompson eventually becomes heroic Venom. Like, after Eddie Brock is, like, evil Venom, Flash Thompson yeah. – well, Flash Thompson in the comics goes to war, loses his legs, and becomes a good guy. Venom. Agent Venom. Are they even allowed to use Venom? Venom is being done by Sony only. That's a shame. But it is tied loosely, like the Black Cat Silver Sable movie that we oh, talked about a yeah. few weeks, uh, a few months ago or whatever. Uh, the Venom movie is set in the Spider-Man Homecoming universe, but can't reference Su- Spider-Man, the Avengers, or anything <laughs> tied to Spider-Man. But it's in the same universe, so they can use some of the villains and some of the settings and backdrops, but they can't actually say... Hey, Spider-Man, where'd you get that black suit? It's going to be like, hey, Eddie Brock, who's never met Peter Parker, here's an alien. <laughs> God, so dumb. Yeah. Although they could, I guess they could do the ultimate Spider-Man route where uh, the Venom was actually taken from a blood sample from Peter Parker and mutated. Like, they tried to isolate the spider gene and it turned into a thing. But I don't know. So, yeah, that would work. Yeah. Comics. Yeah. Comics are great and confusing. Speaking of movies with Michael Keaton in them. Yes. I watched uh, The Founder on Netflix. How is that? It is fantastic. It's a great movie. Really? Yeah. Okay, cool. Really interesting. Uh, really well acted, of course. Of course. Uh, that's so, that's one that I've really kind of wanted to sit down and watch do, when I get some time. Yeah, definitely watch it because yeah. it's, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. How big of a shyster is Roy Kroc? Well, pretty pretty bad. Yeah. He, okay. He, he really I feel like bad for him kind of. Yeah, but then later he goes slowly full slowly turns Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> into a full on really screwing over those McDonald boys. <laughs> huh. Okay. Which are they are also fantastic. Uh, Nick Offerman's really good. Okay, cool. As Dick McDonald. <laughs> and who's the guy that plays Mac McDonald? Because he was really good too. You could... He, um, I know him from the Drew Carey show as Drew Carey's cross dressing brother. But he's been he was in Fargo. He was in um, I can't again can't think of the actor's name. That's kind of a running theme for today's episode. Yeah, can't, can't think of remember. things. Could look it up, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> but he's he's a he's a pretty he's one of those that it's that guy kind of actors. Yeah, yeah. he he looks so sad. You really see the sadness in his eyes when they're getting, you know, the nails taken to him by Roy Kroc. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's a great movie, especially the I'm, like, kind of fascinated by McDonald's. Yeah. Just just the its existence entirely is fascinating, <laughs> and the way it's part of such a big part of American culture is just, it's interesting and weird. Yeah. Not that I'm, like, a huge McDonald's fan. Like, I don't love the food yeah but there's something about it as a concept that is strange and interesting (laughs) yeah it's weird i ate mcdonald's for the first time in a long time yesterday i was running late for something and i hadn't eaten mcdonald's in like six months have you seen those signature burgers yeah they're they're pretty good they're not bad 
the I had the sriracha with spinach and stuff on it. I forget the one I had, not the one with salsa because McDonald's salsa sounds not yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it wasn't bad. How'd they do with the sriracha? Did they put the right amount on? They put the right amount on. Okay. I, I'll, 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 it's, I'll say that. I had a, a sriracha, I think it was a sriracha chicken sandwich from Burger King once, and they just slathered that, that boy up. <laughs> and it, <laughs> it was really bad. It was like, yeah. blow all oh, your sinuses clear. Like, yeah. See, that's the way I like it, though. I like, <laughs> I like my spicy foods. So, All right, well, hey, let's go ahead and take a break here, and when we get back, we'll talk about some uh, news. We're back. That was Totally Clips of the Heart by Bonnie Tyler. Uh, we played that because... There's going to be, or it was. I don't know when is that it there? Monday. It's Monday, Monday, Monday afternoon. Okay. It is a total eclipse of the sun. Not a heart, but a sun. I guess it's the, heart, the sun say. is kind of the heart of the universe. <laughs> or our, our, our galaxy. galaxy. Yeah. Solar system. Yeah. That's probably the right That's word. Probably it's the it. heart of our solar yeah. system. Yeah. But no, it's going to be awesome. Uh, enjoy it. Don't look directly at it. Unless you have those special glasses. Yeah. Even then, I don't think you're supposed to look, like, directly at yeah, it. Yeah, I refuse to pay $4. I'll just cover my eyes. <laughs> Although, I'll be honest, I think I might be driving back from work during it, so I <laughs> might have to invest in some of those special glasses. Or I'll just go blind while I'm driving. Either yeah. or. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> just look right into it. Did you see that, that um, news article that someone think that... Um, Apparently, there's going to be lizard men are going to be appearing oh, no. during oh, this eclipse. I think I saw like a blurb about it that it's it's the beginning of the apocalypse will be the eclipse. Yeah. Which, hey, at this point, you know, who knows? Yeah, let's not get into it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I don't want to get into it, but if, if the apocalypse was coming... I'd welcome it. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised at this point. Yeah, <laughs> no, but let's not, let's not talk about that. This is a happy show. <laughs> Uh, so first off the docket, let's talk about the Obi Wan Kenobi movie. Why not? That's it's happening. <laughs> yeah, fine with me. Yeah, he sure. Seems interesting. I mean, yeah, there's probably some story in there. Uh, I really hope it's like set in the thirty or ten, fifteen years that is where he's just in exile on Tatooine. Yeah, like give me one good just set on one planet, Tatooine. Have have Obi Wan like be like murder mystery. Like, yeah. Detective Obi-Wan, kind of. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of stuff you could do just on Tatooine. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the news article here. There's not a ton of news about it, but it is. it looks like it is going to be set between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope, which it, it almost have to. Yeah. Because I don't want the, the adventures of teenage Obi-Wan pre-Phantom Menace. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't want yeah, that. Let's not go back that far, please. No. And you know, I think Ewan McGregor's... At the age where he could, they wouldn't have to prosthetic him. They could just have him act at his normal age yeah. and be middle-aged Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'm in. He could be dealing with, like, the hut cartels and stuff like that. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be really cool. Who knows? Maybe it'll have Easter eggs to the uh, Han Solo movie. Yeah. Maybe back and forth a little bit. Something. Hopefully, I hope that Han Solo movie is good. I hope these standalone uh, Star Wars movies are good. Yeah. It's not really something we've seen yet. Well, Disney hasn't given us a reason to be worried yet. This is true. Force Awakens was good. Rogue One was good. And everything I've seen come out of uh, Last Jedi seems to be good. Have you seen those Porgs? No. Oh, man. It's the new, like, Ewok. Let me <laughs> look it up. You guys talk about Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some Porgs. <laughs> He was definitely an Obi-Wan if there ever was one. What? <laughs> I don't know. I'm feeling time. <laughs> so these little little guys are those, on the last scene in Force Awakens, those little birds. They're not birds. They're little tiny, oh, like, man. Furby, Furby guys. That's pretty cute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Check those out. The... They're porgs. <laughs> it's going to sell a lot of toys. It's going to sell a ton of toys. And here's the thing. Everyone loves porgs except for... Wookies, <laughs> for whatever reason, Wookies do not care for these little little bird like woodland creatures. They're Jeez. like furry birds, kind of <laughs> like bird furbies. Yeah, they kind of are. They're just bird furbies, and it's just to sell toys. Absolutely, a hundred percent. But but anyway, the Obi Wan Kenobi movie. It's I'm looking forward to it. I like the character. Why not? Yeah. Sure. I mean, you're doing a Han Solo, and you. Let's take all the mystery out of Star No, now I'm being too <laughs> negative. <laughs> Let's take all the mystery out of your favorite Star Wars characters now. 
Yeah, I, there there is an argument to be made there, honestly. But yeah. as long as they're done well, I'm okay. The minute they stop doing them at a higher quality, if they just start cranking them out. Oh, that'll be the worst when they make char- movies about these individual characters that everyone knows and loves and then make them crappy. Yeah. That that will actually, you know, kind of hurt the character going forward in the franchise. It will. Yeah. Well, I, look at what it did to Darth Vader. It took the, the, the baddest the baddest of the bad in the universe and it made him a whiny teenager. Yeah. It took Rogue One to make him scary again. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But, um... They again. They haven't given us any reason to not trust them with this. So, yeah. Okay, I'm in. That's been your baseless Star Wars speculation. Yeah, segment. And, and, and you know what? Because we're being positive, it means it's gonna suck. Yeah. <laughs> because whatever we say is the opposite. <laughs> it's only been a couple movies. Uh, yeah. Yeah. True. Very true. Yaku. After I talked about Yakuza Kiwami earlier in the show. Sure. They also. Like, just this morning announced that Yakuza 6 is coming out next year. Oh, cool. So, we're getting a pretty steady stream of Yakuza games, which is cool. That's cool. Because it used to be really hit or miss whether we would get them or not. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's I good. I think they really carved out a niche when Zero came out, and it was so good. Yeah. I mean, I think they lost some of the some of it to, I think, what Resident Evil 6 came out at the same time. But other than that, it really kind of stood out. Yeah. Also, Resident Evil 6 was so good. Where's... Or not 6. I was going to say, what? 6 was bad. 7 is was the one I'm talking about, and 7 was really good. Okay. Where's 8, Capcom? You're usually real good about pumping out those sequels till we're sick of them. They're too busy trying to fix Capcom versus Marvel Infinite. <laughs> and creating really weird characters for Street Fighter V. <laughs> I've seen ga- uh, more gameplay of the new Abigail character, and he is the weirdest... He's the weirdest character. His light punch is an anti-air. Like he goes like it's just a it's just a big <laughs> just... backhand. Like yeah, he's he's super slow, but if you know what you're doing, he's like unstoppable. <laughs> he's kind of a broken character. Anyway, uh but no, Yakuza 6. That sounds great. I've never played any of the other games, but that sounds awesome. See Atlas, we do talk about your stuff sometimes. Yeah. Thanks for the review. Code. Thanks Atlas. <laughs> We're going to skip over the next one on the list because I want to yeah, come back to it. That's, that's a good one for the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Chuck E. Cheese, they are removing robots yeah, from no their restaurants. Yeah, Chuck E. Cheese, uh, which is something I thought I had figured they'd already done, but I guess not. Maybe just a lot of them broke down and they didn't replace them type that, of thing. That could be. <laughs> but I don't know. I always thought that was kind of the charm of Chuck E. Cheese is yeah. you go see really herky-jerky, like, bad animatronic. I mean, uh, the only other thing to do is play arcade games that are mostly broken by children. Yeah, and eat some substandard pizza. Yeah. Crawl through some urine stinking tubes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you can get that at any McDonald's Land Play place. <laughs> yeah. But with, with Five Nights at Freddy's, aren't animatronic pizza mascots more popular than ever now you would think or is that why they had to get rid of them because children are terrified of them i bet there's two both sides of it (laughs) i bet people are they're more prevalent in the mind but also i bet there's someone in a boardroom saying we can't have these scary things in our in our wholesome family pizza establishment anymore so i'm just waiting for the uh vacuum of animatronic food slinging you know animal mascots I'm waiting for the eventual return of the show's biz pizza. Show bear. biz pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. The Rock of Fire explosion. Ah, that's a great one. I love the Rock of Fire explosion. <laughs> that's super great. For people who don't know, that's uh some guy bought like the band. No, that's the name of the band. Oh, that's the name of the band. Pizza. Okay. All right. Well, um I love the 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 stage show that they did where he sets the um the animatronics to like it's like they cover like Rock band, rock, rock like, songs and yeah. stuff, like heavy metal and stuff. It's great. Some of those uh, videos on YouTube are awesome. There's a good uh, documentary about mm-hmm. it, too. Yeah. I forget what it's called. Probably Rock of Fire Explosion. Yeah, I think it's just Rock of Fire Explosion. Yeah. Actually, I think we had a review of it on the website we years did. and years and years ago. I don't know if it's still there. Oh, it is. Everything's oh. everything's there. Nerd Overload doesn't forget. <laughs> the image links are probably Oh, they're all busted. Yeah. They're all busted. But uh, but no, the the reviews there. So you know, check that out. I think you out. wrote it, Samantha. I think I did too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh uh, well, let's go on to 
Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go. We haven't talked about Pokemon Go in a while. No, no one has. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess they released Mewtwo, which is the final of the, like, specialty... Legendaries for the first generation. Yeah. Which I don't know if we... We didn't talk about it on here, but they also released... All the birds. Yeah, the three birds through their new raid system, which you need, like... Like, if you want a chance to catch one of these legendaries, you need, like, 15 people, other people there with you to whittle down the health on this massive raid yeah. monster. And, like, I find it hard to care because it's still propped up by that terrible battle system that is zero fun. Yeah, I agree. And it's negative fun. It is. And no one plays the game. No one does. Yeah, so you're not going to find those 15 people because like yeah, nobody really plays it anymore unfortunately. Yeah. No, I actually was I was actually having a, a conversation about this at practice the other day. Um because two of the two of the guys um in the in the show are uh, um they play it pretty regularly like are still hooked and it surprised me but they were complaining yeah about how they would go to a raid spot and they'd be like two people there and just it just doesn't the game just doesn't work in the in the way that it's set now it just doesn't there isn't a user base anymore if they would have had this at the get-go oh it would have been awesome it would have been awesome but uh at this point they it's a little it's too little too late. Yeah. Pokemon Go is the game of missed opportunity. Absolutely. It, the potential was there. The potential was so great in that. And we all had Pokemon Go fever. All yeah. of us. Here. Oh, yeah. Everybody did. Yeah. But uh, but now it's just... They, they mishandled it pretty badly. Yeah, they did. And they're trying to get players back into it between this and they've started introducing Shiny, which are specialty-like color... Yeah, animals. Different colored Pokemon. There's a, a Pikachu that's slightly darker colored. There's a gold Magikarp. Yeah, and fine. It's, okay. It's very much a, a new hat scenario. Yeah, except but they've, they've already, already done, done that, that a couple times. Party hat, and then there was the uh, Ashes hat. Yeah. And then your trainer, if you logged on during a certain time, you actually got a Magikarp hat for free. So my guy rocks a hat that looks like my face is coming out of a Magikarp's mouth. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty pretty great. But, yeah. The only way they're going to get people back is if they fix that stinky battle system. Yeah, and... And even then, it's not going to be what it was. Oh, no. no. So, I don't know. Just kind of a bummer. Yeah. I mean, I don't want it to be exactly the same as the... The mainline the games. The mainline games. That doesn't make sense business-wise. I understand why they don't. But at least do something that works mm -hmm. and is fun. Yeah. Oh, while well, we're talking about Nintendo stuff, the Nintendo World Championships is coming back again this year. Yeah, after a couple years off there. A couple years, yeah. It's, 2015 or 2014 was the last one. 2015. Yeah, I think 15. Yeah. They're do they're doing it again, and it's not as retro this time. No, it's Mario Kart 7 is their qualifier on a couple of different tracks, I think is what it is. Or so eight. 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 Yeah. No, Mario no, it's 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 on the Game Boy. It's on the 3DS, so it's oh, seven. Oh, really? Yeah. It's se they're, the, qualifiers, the qualifiers are on the 3DS. That's what I read. Huh. So, That's yeah. a weird it's a, choice. Yeah, it is. But they're doing it again, and uh, it's this weekend and next weekend are the all the qualifiers. Um, this weekend is the big ones in New York and California, and then some of the smaller venues are going to be um, the 26th, I believe it yeah. is. Unfortunately, our closest one is the five-hour drive again. Yeah. Not the same place. No, not the same. Still a Best Buy, but not that same yeah. Best Buy. I don't know. I might still make the trip. I would if I wasn't on another vacation already when it happens. Yeah. <laughs> but uh but no, I I I enjoyed the last one. This one should be a good time as well. If nothing else just to go out and watch to when it when the championships finally hit like Twitch or whatever. Yeah. And well, and they'll have uh demos of Mario Odyssey mm -hmm. and Samus Returns. Or, oh, yeah, yeah that's Returns. right. That's right. Yeah, so yeah. So those will yeah. be cool to get to try, especially mm -hmm. Mario Odyssey. Yeah. So yeah, if anything else, that's worth going and checking out. So yeah, and hey, maybe our our, our uh, friend of the show, Chris Bidwell, BSG two thousand, maybe he'll be back out there and try it try it again to get back into the championships. Maybe I don't know how big of a Mario Kart guy he is, but um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe he's been practicing. Yeah. So that's what gets me. I don't think I would do as good. I mean, I'm I'm pretty good at Mario Kart, but I don't know if I'm like top tier good. Oh, I know I'm not top tier, but just to say that I was out there. That's but reason yeah, enough. Yeah, but the NES, the NES Classic thing they did last 
That time. was yeah. I was um, I did actually did fairly well. Consider you, you did yeah. You actually did. I did very poorly, but I'm not good at video games. <laughs> so yeah. And if you ever want to see pictures of us when we were out there last time, it was a wet and wild time <laughs> because we stood in the rain for like five hours. Yeah. They're all up on our Facebook page. We still have pictures of it, of us from up there. We had video, but it never, it, it was bad. It was bad. We, we, we did a bad job. Not going to lie. We um, hadn't, re- we haven't really done something like that before. It was kind of the first, first try and it, it was not worth using. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe this time, who knows? Yeah. Maybe I'll get some video if I go out. Anyway, um, let's move on to, let's talk about the less fun thing, and then we'll wrap it up with a fun thing. Okay. Sound good? We'll, we'll make a happy sandwich. <laughs> with crap middle? Y- yeah. And we'll make a turd sandwich for we, you. We will here make a show. McDonald's cheeseburger. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. It was, the burger I had was perfectly adequate the other day. Anyway. Um, We've been on a tear about talking about fast food on the We show have. We, we, are, we must be always hungry when we do this show. <laughs> that must be it. Okay, so uh, this takes a little bit of setting up. If you've been wa- listening to our show, I almost said watching. If you've been listening to our show for a while, we make reference to Polygon.com quite a bit. They do um, – it's, it's a game news website, although they're starting to branch out into other forms of – at least uh, they were. Media. They were at some <laughs> point, and uh, including video. They'd start doing a lot of video content, and one of the major uh, personalities in their video content was a guy named Nick Robinson. He was like their video producer guy. He, he was, yeah. And uh, a lot of his stuff was hilarious. It was. I, I don't. I can't knock that. It was really, really funny. Yeah, it good was. Stuff. It was good content, especially the podcast he did with. Uh, Griffin McElroy, uh, Cool Games Inc. Mm-hmm. And he did a ton of stuff with Griffin. He did uh, Carboys, which was the Beam uh, NG, NG dot drive, drive um, thing. He did uh, Touch the Skyrim, where they would try to break uh, Elder Scrolls Skyrim, the game, with various mods. Yeah, it it was it was really good. And then, and this kind of happened almost like overnight, like literally, like overnight yeah. at one point. It became very clear it became it came to light that nick robinson had a tendency to make inappropriate in, tweets at his fans tweets and sexually uh, inappropriate and not just tweets but like direct messages yeah. like there's a term called sliding into dms which is um <laughs> creepy and awful <laughs> To begin with, but it's basically online harassment. Yeah. From the looks of things, and I've done a lot of research into the story, Mm -hmm. because I used to think he was a cool guy. Yeah, same here. (laughs) Uh, But he he would troll around looking for his fans Mm -hmm. that were also attractive ladies, and then slide into their DMs. To try to get nude pictures and stuff. And it's, that's, that can't happen yeah, that's not cool. That is, uh, to say, to put it mildly, that is not cool. It's reprehensible behavior, and unfortunately, it's it's not uncommon in the games industry and games journalism industry, and it has to stop. That yeah. kind of that kind of crap has to stop. Um, and I, I expected so much more out of out of him yeah. as part of the Polygon team, which is a very you know. A pro woman, yes. yeah. Um, pro minority, pro pro, yeah. Very, very much on that end, and he's getting punished for it. He has been let go from Polygon, so he is no longer employed by that website. Um, but the damage is done. Like they, they're having a heck of a time getting their video content back up. Yeah, and going. There, has there been any new? They put up. Um, they did a live stream of uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, another one of their awful squad, and Griffin, to his credit. Uh, got really serious right at the right at the top of the their stream really? and didn't couldn't get into details on anything, but like laid it kind of laid it out that they're going to continue past this and for everyone to you know respect the parties involved and it's a tough time for everyone. All it seems their video team seems to be really rocked by it, and they're having a they're just having a rough time kind of adjusting to um someone who they saw as a as a co-worker and a friend um turn out to be a total creepo to be a creepo yeah yeah, 
Yeah. Um, again, this is – I'm glad he got called out on it because you can't do that. I don't care how good or popular you are. Yeah, you, that's an abuse of your power. It is. And just a – even if he wasn't in a position of power, it's still – It's still awful. See, that's the, that's yeah. the thing. He put out a big, huge post on, 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 on uh, Twitter – that uh, detail that, you know, when you get into a, if, you know, I took, I didn't realize I was in such a position of power and a, it's something I used to do when I was a nobody, but when it was then, it was, he, he claimed it was just all in, all in fun, but he now that it, it, it was flirty. flirting, yeah. but here's the thing. If you're a nobody and you're asking for nudes for, from randos, that's still creepy and yeah. it's still the wrong thing to do. There is, it's like he's learning, he's learned the wrong he, lesson he's learned don't get caught yeah that's kind of it and he's not going to get hired by anyone no i don't i can't see anybody touching that unless so unless there was a uh less than reputable games journalism website that wanted to benefit from the controversy yeah or like some sort of gamer gate like garbage Oh yeah, no, I I was following up pretty heavy on uh, that, and the gamer gators were pretty well split between welcoming him into their fold and also trying to get him to commit suicide, uh, which is a thing oh, that Gamergate does. Yeah, that's that's nice. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, I I would never take it that far ever in a million <laughs> billion years, but as much as I like the guy's content and as much enjoyment as I got over everything, he got what he deserved. I think. Yeah. And. We're saying that he's probably going to start a Patreon and make a bunch of money that way. I hope not. And he probably, he, but he probably will, and he probably will, because I've also seen a lot of people say, you know, oh, we support you, Nick. You haven't done anything wrong. We're going to unsubscribe from Polygon because of them letting you go. But it's he screwed up. Yeah, and I don't think, and we haven't seen everything too. We, and we never, and we never will. Well, yeah. no, we will probably six months down the road or a year down the road when it's when the heat's died and it doesn't. At that point, doesn't matter. Yeah, well, we don't, and we don't need to see anything either. I, yeah, it's, I don't need to know. It's not our all, business. Yeah, all I need to know is he's he was secretly a scumbag. He got caught, and he got no. He is he got not proper. Secretly a, he's just a scumbag. He's just a scumbag now, and he's getting his just desserts for it. So such a shame too, because I I really liked him. I yeah. thought he was a really cool guy, and like you know, I want to do do videos like he does someday type of thing. Yeah. So that's same, same here. I think that's why it kind of uh, hit us, hit us as much as it did. And why I think we've decided to kind of talk about it on the show a little yeah. bit because yeah, he was an influence on, on some of the stuff. And when we start doing more video, I mean, that's the kind of content. It was really funny content. It was really good content. And yeah, it was I, such a surprise. It wasn't like a like the John Tron scenario, like situation that we talked about. You knew about John here. Tron was a jerk. Yeah, you kind of you, you knew he was he was not a cool dude. Yeah, you kind of had a feeling that maybe he was a jerk. So it wasn't as huge of a surprise when he turned out to be a raging racist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah, John Tron was the kind of guy that you can go. Yeah, I could see it. Yeah, Nick Robinson. I guess in hindsight, all the weird like baby talk stuff yeah because that's that was the other thing that kind of th threw me a little bit a lot of the his some of his um dms were made public and it was like weird baby talk stuff and that just skeeves me right the hell out yeah that's not he infant infantilizes himself a yeah. Little, yeah which which makes me think okay his screen name is babylonian maybe it's Babylonian, <laughs> Babylonian. We've been pronouncing it wrong this whole time. Yeah, maybe it's been right there the whole time, and <laughs> we just didn't see it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I joke because it's so weird, you know. Yeah, it's upset. It's just really upsetting. It is. It is. And you know, this is a guy that we've never met. We're probably never going to meet. Oh yeah. Well, I, don't, I don't. I don't want to, want to meet I don't him want now. to anymore. Yeah, but you know, he was an influence on us, on our comedy, on our you know comedic. Especially lately, in the past, you know, year or so, I yeah. guess. But I'm yeah, just, I'm just glad it wasn't Griffin at this point. Yeah. If any of the McElroy brothers end up being anything other than the amazing dudes that they are, I will be very upset. Yeah. My head will explode. Yeah, that would not. 
go well, and it would not go well for a, a lot of people, especially yeah. the the fans of the Adventure Zone podcast, because that just wrapped up, and I've just been seeing like the streams of like people like we've been, super into we've it. We've been diving pretty deep into it lately. Mm-hmm. We're we're all the way to we're what plot line is it that we're on? Just we the just game. yeah. We, oh, that's a really good one. That's a really really good one. We we just hit the beginning of the suffering game. Yeah. Okay. That's when it really gets. It gets, like, real. But anyway, I don't want to spoil it for you guys. <laughs> Let's stop talking about sad things. So DC is doing a, like, magic college comic, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's like kind of a Harry Potter-inspired magic college comic starring Zatanna. Uh, cool. I'm in. Uh, you were reading off a list before of characters that they're going to be using before the uh, we started recording. Yeah. And there's some deep cuts on that. There's... um. Uh, Sargon the Sorcerer, who was an old school, he was a uh, Fawcett Comics or a uh, uh, Wiz Comics. So he was from the um, Captain Marvel uh, area of things. He's in it. There was a uh, Felix Faust, who's yeah. been an old, who's an old school uh, Justice League villain. And it looks like they've all been de-aged or like aged up to like college because Faust is like a thousand years old. So <laughs> yeah, um, they you didn't list it, but it looked like uh, the character Black Alice was there, which is. Uh, Obscure enough, but still kind of a cool character for people who know. Um, some original characters. Some original there. characters, yeah, yeah. And uh, you mentioned that the House of Secrets and the House of Mystery. Mystery are going to be part of this book, which is cool. Those are old school, like the East, like the EC comic knockoff books from like way, way, way back. So if you're if you're into old school magic users, this, mm-hmm. is, this sounds like the comic <laughs> for you. Yeah, it sounds really good. Uh, DC's been really doing a lot of good stuff, and a lot of things are going to be spinning out of this uh, Justice League metal, which I recently read a review of the first ep- issue. I haven't read it yet, but I guess it's not like they don't form Kiss <laughs> <laughs> or like Megadeth or anything like that. No, it's it's like um, that was I was trying to make a, a heavy metal music joke. Uh. It didn't it didn't go over. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> I guess it has to do with Hawkman and the. Uh, magic properties of the nth metal, the stuff that makes his oh. wings fly, and somehow Batman makes robots or armor of the Justice League, and they go nutso or something, something like that. A very comic book kind of Ultron. Yeah, ki- Batman kind of. makes Ultron. Batman makes Ultron. <laughs> yeah, that's probably how it was pitched. Um, but it looks like a lot of things are going to be spinning out of that, and this seems to be one of them. And that's cool. I'm in. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, well, hey, we have reached time, so let's go ahead and wrap things up. You've been listening to Nerd Overload. Thank you very much for tuning in. You can find us each and every day over at nerdoverload.com or on Facebook at facebook.com slash nerdoverloadradio. You can email us at staff at nerdoverload.com. You can tweet at us at nerd underscore overload. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Nerd Overload TV. You can uh, subscribe to our Twitch channel, Nerd Overload Live. That's right, and we're also on iTunes and Stitcher, so check us out over there. And again, thank you all for tuning in, and we will be back not next week, but the week after. We are all taking a, we're all going to be off doing our own thing next week. We're all on reconnaissance next week. Yeah. We're on, we're on assignment, so we'll be back in two weeks. So until then, peace out is the thing that I say at the end.